We're continuing our discussions with Dr. Neil Bringhurst. In our next conversation, we'll continue to talk about polygamy. We'll talk about Todd Compton's book, In Sacred Loneliness, the biography of Joseph Smith's plural lives. We'll also talk about what Bringhurst thinks of Richard Bushman's book, Rough Stone Rolling, and its treatment of polygamy. We'll also talk about some early rumors about polygamy in Nauvoo and get uh, Newell's opinions on that. So check out our conversation. Really appreciate you guys listening. Please continue to give us a five-star review. I appreciate the, the people that have been supporting us lately. Just a reminder, if you want to get the latest transcripts of this and all other transcripts, subscribe on our website uh, for $10 a month. You will be the first one to receive a copy of every transcript uh, every month. We usually come out with one or two a month. So that's a really good deal, and, and you can get a copy of that. So check that out. Now back to our conversation. Let's talk a little bit about polygamy. Uh, your your three volume set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what uh, and I, I didn't realize even your. Oh, well, going well, back to you know you mentioned polygamy. One of the weaknesses, glaring weaknesses, I saw in uh, Richard Bushman's uh, Rough Stone Rolling was he kind of slighted Joseph Smith's involvement with polygamy. I found that one of the most disappointing parts of his uh, Rough Stone Rolling. He kind of slights, he, does, he doesn't even really acknowledge the wives that Joseph married and the relationship of, you know, the work that was done by uh, Todd Compton. You know, Todd Compton really, you know, thoroughly uh, discusses that and, and uh, Bushman sort of slights that. And you, know, you, you talk about Joseph Smith and polygamy and I, I think that was one of the weakest parts of uh, of Richard Bushman's uh, book, I, I I I just had to go back and and say that because I I think that was uh, that's why you have to read Brody along with uh, Bushman. So you thought Brody did a better job covering the polygamy than Bushman? You, did? Well, I, I I he was she was more thorough. I don't know about doing a better job. I think the best job ever done. I mean, he she makes an attempt to list the wives in the index of her book, but it turns out the list is. Uh, is not as accurate as it could have been and and actually Todd Compton used that as a beginning point to go do his study uh, to really understand Joseph Smith and polygamy uh, Todd Compton is the best book to go to okay <laughs> okay <laughs> not better than yours <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah well you know ours uh, looks at uh, you know in, in in a broader sense I mean we cover it, you know, systematically the controversial aspects of uh, of Joseph's practice. I mean, Todd Compton's is mainly a, bi bi a collective biography of the wives themselves. It doesn't get into as much, uh, and you know, Joseph Smith interacting or justifying polygamy and and all of that. I uh, so I I, I think uh, Todd Compton's is the best as far as giving us a feeling who the wives were and how they reacted to Joseph Smith and polygamy and their subsequent uh, activities after Joseph Smith's martyrdom. And, uh, but he doesn't get into the issues that Craig Foster and I do in our book that I, you know, that I described earlier. Mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, the whole problems with polyandry, the problems with underaged women, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and a thorough analysis of, of 132. And I, 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 I think our book does that better than anything else out there. Okay. Well, um, so I guess that is one of the big uh, controversies between, say, Todd Compton and Brian Hales is this, rela this issue about sexual relations. So I, I interviewed Brian just recently, and, and he, he, his position is, um, as far as with the polyandrous wives, uh, women who are married to uh, more than one man, um, that Joseph didn't have any sexual relations with them and didn't have any sexual relations with the, the teen uh, bride. So how, where do you fit on that? Well, I, 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 I tend to think he overstates his case. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that, you know, you would be involved as marrying these women uh, and not having sexual relations with them. And, you, you know, uh, because a major purpose of, of, of polygamy the whole idea is procreation. I mean, how do you procreate? <laughs> well, uh, the, uh, the, the, the apologetic response might be, well, look, where are the children? Yeah, and that's true. 
but uh, you know, maybe the sexual relations were, were, were infrequent. You know, I mean, he was a very busy man, and he, uh, you know, that uh, the, uh, you know, and he, he had all these other fish in the fire uh, to, to fry. I mean, just like Brigham Young, I, how frequently did Brigham Young have sexual relations? With the women that he was married to, although you do have evidence of pro, you know of children and that, of course, but uh, but you know you can gu- with with Joseph Smith, it was for such a short period of time, and uh, but it, it 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 how do you prove that he didn't have sexual how, you know how do you prove a negative? That's the very that's the real problem when you're talking about you know Brian Hales and and I'm not convinced by the evidence that he. He uh, he presents he as I as I said he presents it in a highly legalistic way and and it just it 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 it, it, it seems uh, it 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 just it, it's not completely convincing. I, I know one one conversation that I had with him regarding Helen Mark Kimball um, was that uh, after Joseph was sealed to to Helen, the young young girl that uh, she actually went to dances and other things. Um, and after a while, Joseph was like, yeah, you shouldn't do that anymore. Um, what do you think about that? Is that, is that a valid uh, reason to say, yeah, there wasn't any, any sex between Joseph and Helen you know, in that instance? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly uh, what it, that, that uh, I, I, I'm not sure how that would relate to sexual relations, saying you shouldn't go to dances anymore. I, I don't see the connection between him trying to use that as an argument to prove that he didn't have sexual relations. I'm, I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure of, of what he means by how well, he's. What, what he said that. was, uh, in his case, I believe what he said, and this is kind of a little bit Richard Bushman too, is the idea. Uh, was that they were sealing families together. Yes. And I, and I did ask Brian, I said, well, if she's just a young girl, why didn't they seal Helen as a daughter instead of as a wife? And his response was the, this whole law of adoption didn't exist then. And so the only, the only way to seal uh, Heber's family to Joseph's family would be through marriage. And the, the, he used Helen as, quote, a ewe lamb. Um, to 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 bind these these families together, and so it was a it was a binding of families together, um, and and marriage was the only way to do that uh, because the law of adoption didn't really exist back then. Uh, yeah, I, I I guess you could you could you could make that argument, but uh, uh, it uh, you know I I I still. Uh, it, it 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 still doesn't uh, quite you know I I'm 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 not quite convinced of of that I I I you know that you you discount that for all of all of these teenage wives and you discount that for uh, the women that were married to other men because uh, you know as, as Gary Bajera he's he's taken on that uh, issue in his uh, essay for the Gospel Topics essay I mean. And he's he's made the argument that Joseph Smith was a man who uh, had uh, uh, a man who had a love of life and kind of had this uh, kind of uh, uh, you know strong and probably a strong charismatic personality and and uh, you know I, I uh, that uh, that he he. I, I don't see how you could be married to somebody and say, "Well, we're, we're not really married, and we can't have sexual relations, but yet we're married." It just, uh, as I say, it goes against the whole idea of, uh, of of procreation, which is a major reason for uh, for instituting the practice of polygamy. You're you're instituting pract- polygamy to bring. Uh, uh, these spirits in from the pre-existent world, and that in turn you'll take that progeny into uh, uh, a world of your own, uh, you know, in the hereafter through the process of uh, of eternal progression and exaltation, and so it it, it kind of goes against that. I mean, I uh, I mean it's the same argument that's being used by fundamentalist Mormons today that we're 
we we need these women and have these uh, have these descendants so that we can achieve the highest degree of glory there it's being you know so it 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 doesn't fit in with the larger picture of of of, of uh, how pol polygamy is justified in in dnc 132 mm -hmm. as you're talking about progeny you're talking about descendants and that and and how are you going to have progeny uh i mean do you especially when you're trying to rationalize it on the basis of uh, of uh, those elements in you know of exaltation uh and uh, uh you know uh, uh, eternal progression and and families in the hereafter you're going to have as many progeny as you can to to populate you know a world of your own mm -hmm. yeah I, I see what you're saying there um one other question i wanted to ask you about uh there was a uh, an infamous mormon uh, with the last name of bennett john c bennett <laughs> uh, no relation to me, at least I haven't found one yet. Um, I have looked, actually. Um, but uh, uh, so there, there's been some stories, actually, that, uh, that John C. Bennett, he was a physician, he was a doctor, and that he performed abortions in, in Nauvoo. Um, is that true? Is that false? Where, where do you go with that? Well, you know, I, I, I have to confess, I don't know an awful lot about Bennett. I, I read the biography that was written a number of years ago, uh, and I'm trying to think of the author. Is that Andrew Ehad? E, yeah, it, it's uh, not Ehad. It's, uh, no, it was, uh, it was a non-Mormon. It was published by University of Illinois Press, and it's terrible that I can't think of the name of the uh, the funny uh, thing is, I have the book and I can't think of it. Yeah, either, I'm so. sorry that I can't but, think of his uh, name. Saintly and Scoundrel, it's, right? Sc Saintly Scoundrel. That that was the uh, name of, 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 of the bio. His name is Andrew something, but not Ehot. Mm -hmm. e e Andrew Ehot is another individual, a Mormon. This guy, I think, was non Mormon. Okay. And I, I, I think I've met him and I, you know, many years ago, and I, I reviewed his book. And it's terrible that I can't even remember his name. But as I recall, uh, you know, he, he, you know, it's been so long since I read the book and I can't remember if he makes the case that he did in, in, indeed perform abortions. I mean, there were rumors that he had and, I, and I'm trying to recall if he made a definitive case that indeed he did. I, I think, as I recall, I think he discounted it, but I'm not sure about that. It, 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 it's been too many years mm -hmm. since I read read that biography and i you know i i i i know that bennett seemed uh, you know privy to the practice of plural marriage because he always gives these lurid descriptions of how it how it supposedly functioned and whatever and gave his own interpretation of it but as far as uh the whole issue of abortions i i really Okay. I, I can't and i i, I recall that book. i have it it's one of those books that i have that yeah I read yeah it, but... and and yeah, Ben. Uh, yeah, Bennett was a, uh, you know, he was kind of a scoundrel. He'd been, you know, he left his family and wife, and and tried to assume a new identity. And you know, when he got well, to Nauvoo. And, and as I recall, it, um, and I, I'm trying to remember. You know, I know there were some Hoffman forgeries that that kind of messed up the the details there with the Jonathan Dunham letter, I think, and and some things like that. But what I've I've heard a rumor, and, I, and you know, I know you're not a Bennett expert, but uh, the, the, Bennett may have uh, have started the mob in in Carthage. Are, are you? I, I had never heard that. Oh, you haven't heard that. I, I hadn't I heard that at all. That uh, he was responsible for for the mob. That that's an interesting. It's an interesting premise. But I I've never heard that. Yeah, I've heard that, and I don't I don't know how true it is. I've also heard that he got involved with James Strang, and and yeah, he did. He was definitely involved with Strang, and and uh, he he kind of. Uh, uh, discredited himself in that movement and eventually moved on from there. But he was uh, initially uh, involved with Strang for a short period of time. It seems like I remember one of those Mormon History Association meetings. Uh, I think John Hamer might have done it on, on Strangism. And, and uh, somebody made the statement that it seems like Bennett was involved in both the death of Joseph Smith and James Strang, and that would be yeah. I mean that that that's that pretty true. that's pretty wild. I, <laughs> I mean I and I and I'm sure that this biography uh, 
uh, it doesn't make that at all. Okay. You know, he, you know, eventually Bennett settles down and and uh, is involved with agricultural pursuits toward the end of his life. Kind of an uh, kind of an interesting sequel because it kind of belies the argument that all these enemies of of of, of uh, Joseph Smith, uh, you know, died a violent death or in, it went to met ug ugly ends and stuff like that. But he ended up dying fairly peacefully at home. He was involved in, in I think it was uh, 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 some kind of animal husbandry in that, you know, uh, uh, that he became an expert in that. And, mm. and I guess had a fairly good reputation toward the end of his life. You know, he'd moved on from his involvement with the Mormons and with the Strangites and the last part of his life was pretty normal, pretty inconsequential. I, I remember that about him, and that sort of stood out that uh, he certainly didn't meet the violent end. That uh, you know, the uh, I remember as a, as a, as growing up as a as a Mormon, there was a book that everybody was reading, "The Fate of the Persecutors of Joseph Smith," and that was one that was sold in Deseret Bookstore. And that all these awful apostates, you know, the the horrible ends that they met, you know. <laughs> Well, I think Don Oaks actually refuted that a little bit in his book. On, on <laughs> yeah. The Martyrdom of Joseph Smith. I'd love to interview Don Oaks. I don't know if he'll come on, but. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. We'll see. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Newell Bringhurst. In our next conversation, we'll talk about some projects he's working on. Uh, one other uh, project that I've done with local history, I did a history of the Ku Klux Klan in Tulare County, you wouldn't think that there'd be Ku Klux Klan in California, but we live in a very conservative area. And the Ku Klux Klan wielded some influence in our area during the 1920s and 1930s, and I did some major research there. So that kind of got my feet wet for local history. And Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you like our page on facebook.com slash gospel tangents. You can subscribe at YouTube at youtube.com slash gospel tangents. We're also on Twitter at Gospel Tangents, as well as make sure that you subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss any of our episodes. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our videos. Thanks again.